Welcome to the Daily Smash for Monday, January 8th, 2024. I'm Rick. I'm Kelly. Coming up, Tamara goes after, well, she didn't go after, she actually burned, I think, Shannon and Vicky and went after you. Right. And talk about that a little bit. Also, the cops came to our house again, and we're going to review salt burn. <laughs> uh, but first, congrats to Kelly for getting a gift card to El Pollo Loco. Thank you, El Pollo Loco. $150. Can you tell me how that happened? Because I don't know how it happened. Uh, Jeff Lewis was talking about it mm -hmm. on his radio show. Yeah. And I was, I love El Pollo Loco. So like the, the healthiest of all healthies, you know, the broiled chicken. Yeah. I always get that, that uh -huh. avocado salad. Yep. And I get the uh, tor chicken tortilla soup, which I love. So you were just talking about it on our show, right? Yeah. And then all next thing you know, I was I in our DM. inbox. I get a DM, yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thank love you, El Pollo Loco. We'll be sure to share um, our first meal using that gift card. Yes. Right? Yes. I'm sending out a thank you card to Asia. She bought me a $3,500 Christian Dior tote. Beautiful so bag. It is a beautiful, beautiful bag. She's so generous and so loving. and Good friend. Good friend. We might have to go back to St. Bart's and visit them again. On the on their boat in April. <laughs> yeah, she invited Doug Buden and Megan Weaver. I oh, hope, she did. Yeah, for that same yeah that whole that time. Wouldn't that be fun? It would be. We're doing a lot of traveling coming up. We have a lot. We have a, at least one trip a month mm -hmm. through the summer. Good trips, cool trips, right? Including going to the Kentucky Derby. Kelly's first time ever going to the Derby. That's May. So, are we going to do our Patreon early and talk about this oh, uh, we're gonna camera do, judge thing? Yes. So, you know how we like to save things for page, for Patreon? Sorry. But some, some stuff is so juicy, and, and Kelly will, is going to want to go deeper than we can here on YouTube with the language, etc. So, this whole Tamara Judge thing, we're going to put on, uh, we're going to do a special Patreon. Yes. And it'll be out on Monday. So, when you're watching this on the Smash, just go over to the Rick and Kelly Show on Patreon.com. You'll get 124 episodes plus this bonus episode about the whole Tamara Judge situation. You, it started with this picture, right? Yeah, it started with this picture. And uh, she, well, well, it started off with Vicky calling me and telling me that she broke off with the Trace Amigas. And that Tamara broke off. That Tamara broke off. They had, now, they had shows scheduled, right? They had shows scheduled. They had, uh, she said at LLC, she said they had all these things, the Trace Amiga, they had done all this work, mm -hmm. okay? And she says that there wasn't a, like a, a thing, like a contract, but there was a verbal contract. Right, which is just as binding. I think so too. Well, I know so. So, so Tamara wanted to do the show with Emily and... Okay, first of all, me and Shannon and uh, uh, Vicky are on the phone. Tamara hated. Tamara hated Emily, and Emily hated Tamara. So this is what Tamara does. She wants to come after Shannon this season. Uh -huh. So this is what they do on these shows. They do a conquer and divide. So she tries to get all her little minions because Emily and Heather and Gina. And everybody is so scared to death of Tamara. Yeah. Scared to death of her. And she is scary. Well, hold it right there because we have a lot more, including some some Kelly's conversation with Shannon, some more backstory on this whole situation coming up on our, our Patreon, our special Patreon that is available today, Monday, uh, the Rick and Kelly Show on Patreon.com. You were talking to Up and Adam in part because of this whole thing, right? And he said people wouldn't, they didn't like that he was supporting you. Yeah, uh, Up and Adam said that uh, he was getting tons of uh, voice messages or uh, DMs and, and things saying, if you, you know, support Kelly Dodd, that, you know, I'm not going to watch you or listen to you anymore. Like, how, I mean, people are so insane. Like, so insane, right? We, have a, we have a story in the news coming up. With another, you know, the, one of the worst written articles I've read that calls Kelly a villain and rehashes old nonsense about her. And I want, I want to break that down. Okay. We got hundreds of comments in our Beverly Hills recap, and many of them were about the Garcelle and Dorit situation. And, you know, we were talking about how this might affect their ratings because when 
New York went woke, the ratings disappeared. Yeah. And same thing happened in Orange County, a combination of factors, but that was one of them. They're going to do a Bud Light. <laughs> it's another Dylan Mulvaney situation little, on Beverly yeah, Hills. Uh, yeah, Beverly Hills, a little Bud Light. And That's why they don't put, uh, talk about Heather DeBro. Why don't they talk about Heather DeBro's 12 year old, 13 year old daughter changing her name to Ace? Like, and being a boy. Like, why aren't they showing that? Well, apparently... I mean, they don't show, like, half the stuff that they want. Like, why don't? Why aren't they showing that? Well, because they were, they were worried about Dylan Mulvaney's backlash. But I wonder if that whole thing with Garcelle and Dorit, if it was one of our comment commenters said they thought the producers put Garcelle up to it. Oh, I think so. Because they'll do that, I, right? No, they, they did that with uh, Thomas Kelly and uh, Laser and the production team wanted Bronwyn to talk about all the woke stuff that was going on. Uh, I mean, how she wanted to change Orange County into being right. super liberal, like far left, like far left woke. Like, sorry, you're not going to change people here in Orange County. Everyone is a Republican here. And everyone. And based on the tone of the comments that we've received, and again, hundreds of them, it seems like people are tired of this and don't want to watch. They don't want their entertainment program to turn into some sort of education. civics lesson. Education. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't, want, I don't want to be educated on, on stuff. I want to or be scolded. Or scolded. I mean, everybody gets an icky feeling. And I think that's what happened. I mean, I don't know why I got, like, you know, everyone felt the way I did. Emily Simpson gave to Donald Trump. Shannon is a, a staunch Republican. I mean, Tamara Judge is a Republican. Why do you uh -huh. think her son is pro-Trump? Like everybody is, and they they don't but don't they don't want to say that they they're playing they, the game. They're playing the game, right? Mm -hmm. They don't say exactly how they feel because they're afraid of their job. Yeah. They don't. They're all fake. They have to. They have to have it. They have to make ends meet. I, I understand why they don't say anything. I get it. A lot of people can't. A lot of people in you know real jobs. You know, oh, I I went through that at Fox. I could not share my my feelings about certain stories, and I and I couldn't. I knew that if I posted anything on Twitter or Instagram, I had to be very careful, or I'd get in trouble with right. my employer. Yeah, I had to be very very careful. If that's what you mean. Well, that's right? what I mean. They, they have to be very careful. They need to keep their job. They want to keep their job. And they know that Bravo, NBC Universal, MSNBC mm -hmm. are very, very far left. Left, far left. And, um, you know, they know that they can't go around it. Like, they, yeah. they, they, they have to be silent. Yeah. Well, for me, it was less about agenda and just more about rocking the boat saying something controversial, and then I knew I'd get in trouble. Like the way I said it was God's way of thinning her, which was like out of context. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I said it on my Instagram to another commenter that was going crazy on me. That line will haunt you it, it for was, the rest of your life. It was actually like I was just being an asshole, but back to that person. Like, yeah. Yeah, and then it, went, it blew up everywhere. More on that on Patreon. So we spent a few days in the desert in between tenants, it's now rented till the end of March, and we will take thirty k for April, but it's we uh, got twenty k for three sixty grand per month. Uh, twenty eight day minimum rental, picklepartyhouse dot com. But while we were there, the cops came again, <laughs> which has happened. I don't know how many times the cops came to the house. Our neighbor, that neighbor behind us, yeah, that architect that sucks bad. He he. He calls the cops all the time. All the we time. don't. We're ninety nine percent sure it was him. And listen, in this case, we had uh, uh, Tony and Rebecca's sons and their two friends, and they were in the hot tub for probably four or five hours in the in the back. And at first, they had music on, and I told them you got to turn it down. And, and eventually, they turned it we way were down. We respectful of the music. We told yeah. them to turn it down. We yeah. were, but they were also talking and talking and talking. And I guess after several hours of that. I assume he just couldn't take it anymore. I don't know. But the cop came to the door. It wasn't even that late at night. It was like maybe, I don't know, 9 o'clock, 8, 9, 10 Something at the latest. Something like that. And he was really, he was respectful. He was cool. Uh, sheriff's deputy, just like, noise complaint. I was like, I'm so sorry. I already warned him once. I'll turn, make sure the music's off and tell him to bring it inside. And, you know, he told me, as they always do, if I have to come back, it's going to be a citation. Those neighbors, that neighbor back there 
is such a prick. But like, here's, here's my thing. And I'm sorry to interrupt. My thing is... He's and that got guy my, will never move. That guy will be there. That guy will die there, okay? But he has our phone number. He has my number. And instead of just texting me and saying, hey, can you guys keep it down? Or, hey, we're, my, the baby's trying to sleep. Whatever. Honestly, if he texted me, that's all it would take. I would respect the neighbor's wishes, and I would tell the boys time to shut it down. I would. But instead of texting me, he calls the cops every time. Yeah. Like, what a jerk. Right. Like, I, I'm not that hard to get along with. All you have to do is just let me know. We have an issue. Okay, I'll, I'll handle it. I'll take care of it. I just, I don't get that. Should I show everybody with the presents that I got today? <laughs> uh, can I bring them up here and show them? Why don't we save them for tomorrow? Okay. It's kind of cool. Um, when we were driving back, oh, and while we were in the desert, we saw the car show. Oh, that was cool. It's the first Friday of every month. They encourage classic car owners and cool car owners to just, I guess it's just cruise, like... Cruise, go cruising. Yeah. It's like American Graffiti. Yeah. And so we got a little video of some of these cars going up and down El Paseo, which happens to be two blocks from our amazing desert home. And I don't know, it was just really cool. It was cool. Watching those cars go by. Then, I don't know, we started talking about cars, and I remembered the club that I used to put on my steering wheel in my... Oh my God, we were laughing so hard. 86 GT Mustang convertible. No, I was no because what I said to you, I was like, remember back in the 90s when everybody would steal your radio? Then you'd have those little radios that you'd push and then put it in your purse and like walk off. Like the face would pop yeah, off, Yeah, you'd right? get at Circuit City. And then you and know, juvenile delinquents, like I mean, my how friends, How come no one steals steal radios them. anymore? Like they used to like in the 90s. They're all built in now. Back then, a lot of these older cars. Or it was just that we just had like crappy cars back then. And yeah. That's all like that, that all we could. Right. Like I had a '66 Ford Fairlane. It had an AM radio in it. So you know, I, I took had that a Jeep out. Wrangler. Well, I, so I took the stereo out and I put a nice stereo and a bunch of Jensen speakers in the car, and it was like all of a sudden I had this huge loud stereo. Yeah. It, yeah. But then, and that led to the club conversation. I don't know how many of you ever had the club. I guess you could still use it. I don't know. I think they're like obsolete. I think you can just like put some kind of chemical in there and it like undoes it. Or you, or you just cut something. the steering wheel and then you just pop it off. There's so many ways to beat the club. But I used to lock it up. I was up in the club back then. <laughs> so someone, oh, your friend Jody suggested we watch Saltburn. Oh, yeah. Um, wow. Prime video. We watched that. And then so Jolie is in love with this boy on there and he's a good looking kid and i was dying laughing because i wanted to see how old that that one actor was in that movie what we had you guys watch uh it's called the deer something of the deer yeah with nicole kim in and colin farrell and then this weirdo kid and he's irish actually i think and his last name is keegan or keen or keo something. or something k-e-o-j-h-g-h-a-n i don't so know how you pronounce he's, that so he's i looked to see up his birthday and where he was from he's 31 and then that rose munn very popular actress who plays the mom of the friend right and she was in that movie go girl gone girl or gone girl yeah yeah and so she was in reacher too i think yes Tom yes Cruise. she's a she's a british actress I didn't know she was British. Mm -hmm. I looked her up too. She's 44. And I'm like, how are these, like, how is she the mom? And these kids are like 31. Well, I get that 44-year-old plays a mom. That's not a stretch. I mean, no, she she's could 44. be the actual age. But a 31-year-old playing a college kid is a little more of a stretch. He does look, he looked kind of young. But at the same time, I'm like, that kid is not, he does not look like he's a kid in college. So the whole, like, it was, it was like the weirdest, it was like the weirdest movie and I, it was almost like disturbing like okay. i was disturbed yes it is disturbing and full disclosure there's a lot of nudity and sex scenes in there a lot of sex scenes like nasty so there's this one part <laughs> oh, God. where be careful what you say on here this is youtube well there's this one part rick and i are watching it i'm like ew ew, oh, it is. ew. you got warned too yeah so julie comes out here and this guy is full on naked, having sex with a grape. I'm not joking. 
And she walks in, and it's so uncomfortable when you're with your kids. Yeah, but I think they'd already seen it. They already saw it, and Julie's like this, and yeah. I'm like, oh my god! I like, guarantee it was, you, she wasn't hiding her eyes when she was watching it without us. It was. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> well, it's just so weird because when we were kids, no one ever saw you know wieners. But the crazy thing we is, we never saw wieners. There's, of course not. It's all full frontal with men now. Like it's like you see it all. But it's they like already knew full on you porn in there. Yeah. And they already knew about the movie. I never heard of it. I've never heard about the movie. Not only did they know about it. Because they're, they're in love with that boy. Uh, oh. I guess he played Elvis in another movie. Yeah, with Priscilla. So anyone who And then Julie it? goes, and he was also in another one that she likes. Those that young kids like. Oh. Uh, uh, I don't know what that is. I think I know what you're talking about. Was it a series on uh, Showtime or HBO? That one? Let's call her. Hey, what's that? Yeah. What's that kid's name? That boy's name that you guys are all in love with? Um, Jacob Lordy. Jacob Lordy, and what was was he? El Lordy. El Lordy. El Lordy. El Lordy. El Lordy. Is he American? He's Australian. Oh, he's Australian. Oh, he's Australian. All the best actors are British and Australian. Yeah, no kidding. What what series was he in? What series was he in? Um, Euphoria. You guys should watch it. He does really really well in that. Euphoria. Okay. Euphoria. I knew that's what it was. I couldn't think of the name of it. All right. Thanks. Good job. Okay, love Good you. job. Love, love you. you. Bye. Bye. So on a scale of 1 to 10, and again, a weird film, but I enjoyed it. I think you did too. I loved it. I what, thought it was great. Scale of 1 to 10. I would say a 9.5. Whoa. I loved it because it was so weird and like Yeah. It was shocking. very well done. I, I have to say I, I'm, I'm, on the, I'm on the same page as you. I'll give it a... I mean, I totally recommend it. I totally enjoyed it. I would watch it again. I'll give it a nine. Nine, two. Salt burn. I, I have to say, I predicted a lot of the things that happened mm -hmm. that were like plot twists. I saw them coming. I'm pretty good at that. So I think there is some kind of animal up on the roof here. I think it's a possum because... There's no way. Was there and the possum was coming up the There's no way stairs. that's a possum. I just went up there and I looked. That sounds like a ball being dribbled on the roof, does it not? Oh, yeah. well, I guess there's a lot of wind right now. There is. I feel like there's something knocking against. And this, we went through this before. Remember, I went up there five times, kept hearing the noise, kept going up, couldn't find where the noise was coming from. Well, yeah. We know it's not the ice maker <laughs> because the repairman came and he took the whole unit out, and we're waiting on a part. So there was this girl on the New York Housewives. Yeah. Um, one of the new, the reboot girl. Oh, I just read that post. Yeah. And she is getting charged $40,000 for back rent, I guess, because she's not paying her rent. She got sued. She got sued so, for $40,000. But I understand why she, like, she didn't pay it. She stopped paying the rent because they've been dealing with this issue, I guess, with the elevator in their building that... The guy had promised to fix, and then he wasn't fixing it. And they had invested a lot of money in this location, in this apartment, and they were trying. But they're battling back and forth with this guy, and they're not getting it. He's not getting it done. And they're and they're they're get so frustrated. They they consulted an attorney, and their attorney told them, stop paying rent until the problem gets fixed. That's how you that's how you deal with it. Yeah. So I I understand where they're coming from. And so this, now, the, all of a sudden, this guy six months later is trying to sue them for the back rent when he never addressed the issue as it was happening. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. That, okay. Well, in any event, we have now in the news. In the news, if you call it news. One of the worst articles ever by Sportskeeda. I don't know. I get these Google alerts, and this came in my Google alert. So... The article was headlined, The Real Housewives Franchise, Five Villains Over the Years. So I start reading this because Kelly's like, oh, should we talk about this? Should I, should I uh, post a link to this? I start reading the article. I'm like, babe, I would suggest you not post a link because it's so poorly written. It's, it's AI, I think. But, I but don't like think it's AI. A dumb robot. All right, just listen to this first sentence. The Real Housewives Franchise. Because if a robot, they would know how to write. The no. AI knows how to write. The Real Housewives franchise, Bravo's popular series, has aired since 2006 when RHOC first aired. Now, I'm sorry, but that I is the worst opening sentence. Aired, aired. Like, it's just it's stupid. 
Aired, aired. Rick the goes, re- this is lazy. It's poorly written. <laughs> they the were re- aired, aired in two... In, and then... In, right up, yeah, go ahead. And then the next line, the reality series has seen several cast members come and go over the years. Several? Yeah. Dozens. Several, several is five or six, right? Four, five, six? Yeah. Several cast members? No. Several dozens. Cast- <laughs> dozens. While others have maintained their positions as fan favorites. To me, that just reeks of AI. It's just garbage. Uh huh. However, more often than not, however, comma, more often than not, the cast members who were let go also brought the most drama. Well, in Kelly's case, that's true. I mean, you brought drama. Mm-hmm. You brought entertainment value. I'm going to skip to the end. They mentioned Monica from Salt Lake. Danielle. Monica's number one. From New Jersey. Monica's number one, and only because it's just aired. And no one had ever heard of this chick before. No. Camille Grammer. Brandy Glanville. And then Kelly. Kelly Dodd joined the cast of RHOC in season 11, but quickly started displaying behavior that didn't sit well with the rest of the started cast. Started quickly? I was on the show for five years. How did it start quickly? And you were bullied. I was bullied hard. You weren't the villain in season no, one. No, I was bullied. I was bullied, bullied, bullied. I was just trying to stick up for myself. Anybody who watched you on that bus ride in Ireland? That was my first year. Bullied. Would, and, and, f- and the 70s party. I had to feel bad for you. Yeah. From inappropriate comments to insults directed at her cast members, she quickly gained the reputation of being a villain. Oh, yeah. No, just because I stuck up for myself. Some of her offenses included body shaming Shannon Bedore. I, I just said keep eating because she kept talking about how much weight she's gained. I was, <laughs> I mean, I was. She was just kept complaining and talking about it and talking about it, and that's like was like her whole storyline. And that wasn't body it wasn't shaming. Body shaming. All you said was keep eating. Yeah. Uh, accusing her husband David of cheating. I didn't accuse her. It did happen. It's a fact. Calling- I didn't accuse. It's a truth. Calling Vicky Gunvalson a pig. Well, I only did that because of uh, she hated that because Gretchen's Slay Smiley said that. And I did it to hurt her because... You guys were fighting. We were fighting. And accusing Bronwyn Burke of being a fake alcoholic. I wasn't accusing of that. She was completely fine. Whatever. I was with her for a whole two years and never saw her... Be an alcoholic. I used to work out with her in the in the mornings every morning, and she was like, she didn't drink the night before. I, she didn't seem like an alcoholic to me. I don't know. Maybe she was. Okay. Didn't seem like an alcoholic to me. Maybe she was. I and, don't know. And this is the last line. She also spread misinformation about COVID nineteen, and was let go by Bravo after season fifteen. I spread misinformation about COVID nineteen. What misinformation did Kelly spread? Yeah. B- please be specific. Tell right. me what she spread that was misinformation. Now, with all, all the, the benefit of hindsight and all we've learned in the last three years. I, I, can, what, what I you- can tell you what Bravo was mad about. I can tell you what, because plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills, whom was our friend, I just asked and did a little quicker interview on my internet. Um, I, think I said, do the mask You're work. You're doing a story, I think. And he said, no. Doctor. Do the mask work? The doctor said, no, he said they don't work out in, in, in the world, in the world, where there's germs everywhere. Right. No, like In they a don't controlled work. environment, in a hospital room, I understand it. In a surgical you know, room, yeah, you want to put masks on. You have open wounds, you're, you know, deal with, it's a sterile environment. The real world is not. Sterile. You think putting on a mask and going in a grocery store is really going to make a difference? Yeah, when there's germs all over the food. You're touching everything. And you're touching everything. And then you touch your mask. <laughs> you're adjusting your mask. You take it off. You put it back on. I think washing Come your on. hands is way more effective, but whatever. <laughs> it is. So anyway, uh, good job, Sports Skeeta, with that piece of crap article that you uh, claim that you call journalism. So, so but I, I really want to know, what did I do? Maybe you guys can enlighten me or tell me, my smashers. What did I do that pissed Bravo off so much that they hate me? I, I want to know. Like, yeah. Why was I on the wrong side of history? Was I on the wrong side of history? Are, 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 like, what did I really do? Did I, did I steal, people, you know, steal money from burn victims? Did I cheat the government? 
Did I get a DUI? Um, did I break the law? Uh, can you please enlighten? Did I hurt people's livelihoods? Mm-hmm. What did I, I only wanted businesses to thrive? I wanted to go out and take care of our business. I wasn't scared. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I did. Didn't stay inside when everybody told me to. Yeah, right. I didn't. I lived right. my life. I wasn't scared. But none of that was on the show, by the way. That was just our. our yeah, it our was because we were our just life. because you were out doing live shots with Box, and we were, and, and everyone was at home scared. No, yeah, but what I meant was that wasn't on the Real Housewives. Yes, it season. was. Oh, it was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. That's why Andy Cohen said, "Don't you think you're on the wrong side of history?" Yeah, but if you if you were to pick five villains from the entire history of of the Housewives franchise, I'm guessing you would have a lot more names <clears throat> than, than this this crew. I I don't know why they don't have half the people that have broke the like they have Monica number one, Daniel Staub, Camille, Brandy Glanville, me. <laughs> why wouldn't they have Teresa Giudice? Whom went to? I love her, but she went to prison. She went to prison. Okay, like Erica I don't know Jane she accused did. of defrauding er- er- Erica uh, Jane burn victims. I mean, not defrauding, but spending the money that her husband allegedly stole. Jen from, Shaw, who's in jail now. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. It's like there's there's so many more villains than myself. I'm not. I I I never did anything wrong. What about Tamara? Oh, Tamara. What about Tamara Judge? We're going to talk about her on Patreon. What about what about Gina, who got a DUI? How about that? I, yeah. And she went after Shannon hard. Hey, people that broke the law. Yeah. I didn't break the law. <laughs> I just wasn't at, in the, the same narrative as Bravo. I just, I didn't have that. I wasn't a, a, a aligning accordingly to their agenda. All right. On that note, uh, we're going to take off. And appreciate you very much. We hope you have a smash tastic day. Yeah. And uh, hope sorry, you we're not doing jan- oh, uh, dry January. I know some of you got mad. It's we're like, doing a wet that- January. We're doing wet January. We did not drink on Saturday. We did not. We didn't drink mm-hmm. all day. We did a lot of work. We took mm-hmm. all of our stuff down. Yep. Oh my God. Do you notice behind us all the Christmas decorations are gone? I, I should turn, turn that light, light on. on. There you go. So, everybody, Happy New Year. I hope you guys have the great week ahead of you. Uh, take care. We are going to have dinner at my cousin Tony's house. And, uh, we'll but talk first, we're going to record that very special Patreon. Mm-hmm. Come check it out.